So when you die with Christ, your resurrection is that there's a new life at work in you. That life that Adam lost at the beginning is restored. What is the purpose of that life? It's not breakthrough. Do you know? And you see, when I preach like this, sometimes I'm afraid. And I, I'm a human being. And I'm sharing with you now. Sometimes I go back and I say, Kesena, warn yourself. Oh. Because how do you preach these kind of messages and then stand on the pulpit and tell people, come and contribute to a building? But you see, I will not because I know that we have to build a church. Hide truth. I will not. If it is the will of God that that building should be built, he will raise the money for us. Ah. He will be the one going to stir the hearts of people. Because if we look at our congregation, it looks like madness to attempt to build such a structure. We look like mad people. But you see, we realize that there are some that God will bless financially. There are some that God will, will say, live your life and die. The one that has is not better than the one that does not have. And the one that does not have is not more important to God than the one that has. Or vice versa. The most important thing is whether you live or you die. Whether you are poor or you are rich. You are doing everything to, for his will and to his glory. And to his glory. Resurrection is that you will come into the newness of life. You that was dead in sin, dead in trespass. You now die to sin. And then you begin to host God again. That's the essence of the cross. I know that God can heal the sick. I know God can bless the works of a man's hand. But that's not the essence of the cross. Give me Romans chapter 4 and 25. We'll come back here. Give me 4 and 25. 4 and 25. Look at it. Give me NLT. NLT. Give me NLT first. He was handed over to die because of what? And he was raised to life to do what? Make us right with God. Give me Amplified. Do we have Amplified? Amplified. Who was betrayed and put to death because of what? And was raised to secure what? Our acquittal. Do you know what acquittal is? You were brought guilty before the judge and he said, discharged and acquitted. Our acquittal, making our account balance and absolving us from what? It means that if you are not born again, your account is in negative. You have received credit. Small accounting will show you that your credit column and your debit column must match. If they don't match, your account will not balance. So it was raised for our justification. It was not raised so that you can become a millionaire. If you become a millionaire in the course of your life and it's the will of God, glory to God. But the main reason for his resurrection was your what? Justification. So you might walk in newness of life. Newness of life. Go back to Romans 6. I need to finish that. Go back to Romans 6. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, just that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? Newness of life. Verse 5. We're going far. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his what? Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that what? The body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be what? Slaves of sin. So if you are still under the order of the old Adam, you are a slave of sin. A slave. So it is an aberration for one to say that he is resurrected with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live it. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. How is that scripture true and your life a lie? How? How 
how is Christ living in you and lies are still flowing on your tongue? How is Christ living in you? He says, the life I now live, Galatians 2, 20, 21. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. Imagine you have the life of Christ in you. With the life of Christ in you, you can still masturbate yourself to pleasure. How does the life of Christ exist in you and the desire for masturbation still exist in you at the same time? You did not die. If you died sincerely with him, if you have come to the point where you know that I died with him, you will know that there are certain things that are not permitted in your space. When Satan whispers a thought into your heart, brings an, an, a suggestion into your mind, you will look at him and say, that man died. He's dead. Verse 7. Verse 7. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Verse 8. Now, if we died with Christ, we, leave, we believe that we shall also live with him. Next verse. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, does what? Dies no more. Death no longer has dominion where? Next verse. For the death that he died, how many times did he die? How? Once. All this you're rising and falling is because your reality of death is not true. But the life that he lives, he lives how? To God. That's how a Christian should live. When you die once, then you live to God. That's the trajectory. When we see that you're always falling back into death, falling back into death, there's something wrong with your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Next verse, 11. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. What does he mean by likewise? Just the way Christ died to sin once, and now he lives unto God. You too, look at the pattern of Christ, die to sin how many times? Once. And do what? Live. Verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign where? That you should what? 13. 13. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as what? And your members as what? Give us an LT. Oh, time is not on my side. Look at it. Do not let any part of what become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, do what? Somebody say completely. Your eyes, your ears, your thoughts, your body completely. For you were dead. But now you have what? new life so use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for who the glory of god use your body now look at it he said do not let any part of your body that means you are the one that is in charge so if i meet allah somewhere and he said hey this part of my body is an instrument of sin i will not blame satan first who will i blame him you are the one that has allowed that part of your body to become an instrument of sin. So you cannot say, I don't know what happened. I just got angry and I slapped my wife. Or oh, guys, you that slapped her. You knew what you were doing. You knew what you were doing. You allowed your member become an instrument of sin. You knew what you were doing. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians 15. I can't read all the scriptures now. I'm running out of time. Give me verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand. Verse 2. By which you are also, also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. 3. For I delivered to you first all that which I also received. Notice that Christ did what? How? 
according to the scripture. So his death was in fulfillment of what? The scriptures. But go further. And that he was buried and that he arose again the third day. How? Verse 12. Verse 12. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Next verse. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is what? Not risen. So he's saying that because the Corinthian church were arguing that nobody is going to resurrect. He said if Christ did not resurrect, if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ himself did not resurrect. Next verse, 14. Go quickly. And if Christ is not risen, then what is happening? Our preaching is empty. And your faith is also what? So the core of the Christian faith is what? Resurrection. Are you with me? Everything here, everything we are doing, first, the reason Christianity is possible is because Christ resurrected. And one of the things that give us hope is that we too resurrect. This life, preach to your neighbor, preach, preach. Say this life is not the end. It's just the beginning. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise 16 for if the dead do not rise then Christ is not risen go with me and if Christ is not risen what happened to your faith why is your faith full time you are still in your sins resurrection is what makes justification possible and what is justification you have been acquitted from your sins is the resurrection that makes you bold to look Satan in the eye and say, that man has died. I'm a new man. I'm a new man. If not, people like me should not be preaching gospel. My faith is potent because of the resurrection. Next verse, 18. Then also, all those who have fallen in Christ, fallen asleep in Christ, have what? That means they lived for nothing. They died for nothing. They will just be rotting in the grave. Oh, it was about this time in March last year that I, we, we just came from a meeting somewhere in Delta State University, Abraka. And in that meeting, the presence of God was rich. Conviction was like an armed man. It was in that meeting that when I got back, Presidents of fellowship were telling me how they have been sleeping with sisters in their, in their fellowships. It was in that meeting. A young girl sent me a message that the, her own is not a president in fellowship. That the one she's sleeping with is a pastor of a big church in Benin. It was from that meeting. Conviction was like an armed man. And in the thick of the meeting here, that March 27th or 20, 27th or so, in the thick of the meeting here, my son was on the drums. The drums were there at that time. And then I raised the song, no glory in this world. No greatness here for me. If I had known that that would be his last service. If I had known. I'm the way I am is the resurrection. I have hope. It doesn't end here. It doesn't end here. Paul was saying that if you are living for just this life, so you are to be pitied. We should, we, should, we should throw a pity party for you and pity you. But you see, the way we live is that whether we are rich, whether we are poor, 
whether we are liked or hated, whether we are loved or dishonored, we have hope in Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. Next verse, verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Those who have fallen asleep, he's speaking about those who have died, those who died in the faith. He has come, become the first fruit. 21. For since by man, by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be what? Made alive. 23. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruit. Afterward, those who are Christ that is coming. 24. I think I'm going to 28. Then comes what? The end. When he delivers the kingdom to God the Father. And when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. 25. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. 26. The last enemy that will be destroyed is what? That is when true immortality will begin. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are under him, it is evident that he, he, he who put all things under him is accepted. 28. Now, when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. I'm looking for one verse. Otherwise, what would they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all when they are they baptized for the dead? I can't find the verse I'm looking for. There's a verse I'm looking for. Anyway, that must not, that must be out of what God wants me to say tonight. Most important thing here tonight is if in this life alone you have hope, you have all men what? Most miserable. He says, most pitiable. Let me end this quickly. I want to end the teaching tonight with a story. A story you can find in Matthew chapter 27 and verse 15. The Bible tells us a story of a guy called Barabbas. Have you read that story before? Give me Matthew 27 verse 15. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. 16. At that time, they had a what? That's all I want you to see. He was a what? Notorious prisoner called who? Barabbas. Now, when you read this story, the thing that strikes me about this story is everything that was playing out in this story was a revelation of what happens to us as believers. The chief priests engineered the crowd. So even though Pilate was insisting, I want to give you Barabbas. They said, no. Give us Jesus, the Christ, so we can crucify him. Let's run through it. Let me do it in three minutes. Go to verse 17. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called who? Christ. This is a picture of the divine exchange. Do you know what the meaning of the name Barabbas is? Son of the Father. Ba-Abba. Means son of the Father. So what Pilate was asking there is, Do I release to you son of the Father? Or son of the father who is called the Christ because Jesus is also the son of the father so the son of the father came so that other sons can also become sons of the father are you with me so what Pilate was asking for was to do exactly what Jesus was going to do where the divine exchange. The reason Pilate was asking is that he knew that they had handed him over because of what? Not because he was guilty. 
Next verse. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. 20. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for who? Barabbas and destroy who? Jesus. Next verse. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They shouted who? 22. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, What? You know my story tonight is that they crucified Jesus. Go to the next verse. Then the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him, let him be crucified. 24. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail, but rather that the tumult was raising, rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. 25. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. They took him. They wore him a crown of thorns. They began to, 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 to scourge him. Are you with me? But Barabbas, eh? Barabbas, who was going to be replaced with Jesus? Remember, Jesus, Pilate was asking, let me give you Barabbas so you do it what you want to do with Barabbas and then let Jesus be free. They said, no, free Barabbas and crucify who? Are you still with me? My question tonight is, what happened to Barabbas? Shall you know that Barabbas walked out of that place that day a free man? Shall you know? That's why I wanted you to see that he was called a notorious criminal. And do you know that this is one story that all the Gospels carry is in Luke is in Mark, is in John, all. He walked out of that place to that day, a free man. The question is that, what did he do with his freedom? We never heard about Barabbas again. <laughs> what will happen to you at the resurrection? never. Jesus cast out demons from a man and those demons ran into a pig into a head of pigs and the man didn't wait till next week he said I will follow you wherever permit me to follow you and Jesus said no don't bother you have an assignment here he said go into the city the man was cured of demons and immediately entered into his prophetic destiny as an evangelist Barabbas was declared free. We don't know what he did with his life. When the end of the age comes and you are waking, if the age meets you dead, or when Jesus comes and you are living, will you be living the resurrected life? Or will you be like Barabbas? Free, but not under God's government. I want you to go and check it out when you get home. What happened to Barabbas?